and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another instalment of the Jomwa Saves series. The series of videos where I show you an affordable alternative to a not so affordable Swiss luxury watch, and they don't get much less affordable than Richard Meal, do they? As worn prominently by the rich and the famous, including many in the Formula One paddock, as RM are sponsors of both Ferrari and McLaren. Now, the cheapest Richard meal, the cheapest Richard meal, comes in at a mere 60,000 US dollars, but they do go all the way up to 1.25 million for a tourbillon with a vibrating alarm, of course. But what if you love the look, but don't quite happen to have a spare million on hand? Well, I've got a couple of watches in for review today by Boderi that are big, chunky, in your face. They're made of titanium. They have a skeletonized high beat automatic with a 70 hour power reserve, a proper two year warranty, decent water resistance, and they'll cost you $270. Definitely a bit of a saving when compared to a Richard Mille. But two of you won't even be paying $270. Two of you will be getting a Boderi Storm for absolutely nothing because I'm giving two of them away. What do you have to do to win one? Well, stay tuned and I'll tell you. Now, you saw the pop-up? Giveaway equals sponsored video, and indeed this video is sponsored by Boderi. They got in touch about a review and I asked if they would send me two watches, which I could then give away, and they were delighted to do so. I will, of course, therefore, leave a link to the watch in the description of the video on their website. Now, giveaway, unfortunately, also means scammers. Ones like this asking for you to telegram me, but it's not me, it's somebody else. You know this by now, don't get scammed, please. So, we know the specs are decent, we know it's a lot less money than an original, but the eternal question remains, is it actually any good? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, let's start with a couple of confessions. The first being that the watches you win are the watches you see in the video today. So they're not 100% new, but they are 1% YouTube famous. Decent packaging for the money, kind of standard looking box, solid cushion, and underneath the cushion, you'll find an instruction manual, warranty card, and polishing cloth. It's a proper two year warranty as well, which I think goes some way to alleviating any doubts about the unknown movement. Now, the second confession is that I haven't reviewed too many watches like this over the past six years because they're not personally my cup of tea. Bit too big, bit too much going on for a man who likes black and gilt retro dive watches. Each to their own though, I know this style of watch is very popular because when I have reviewed similar skeletonized watches by Seagar Designs in the past, the videos have always done really well. Now I gave you a brief summary of the specs in the intro already and they are pretty impressive considering the price tag. These are 299 in a total of five different color variants. However, there is a 10% off voucher code available, hence why I quoted 270 in the intro. Now it is a big boy, but I was surprised by how well it wears considering the size It's actually really comfortable. The square case is 41.5 mil in diameter. It's only 12.5 mil thick and the watch is curved as you'll see, including curved glass, both front and back. Lug to lug is big though at 55 mil. Now the curve helps, but I've got a seven inch wrist. I think it's probably on the upper edges for me. You'll see the wrist shots coming up. You can judge for yourself. Lug width is 24 mil with this one. Kind of big matching that lug to lug length. FKM rubber strap screws in. So choose carefully in terms of colors. You're most likely gonna leave this one on the rubber. I don't think you'll find many other straps able to fit this one, frankly. Weight isn't too bad though, considering the size, because it's titanium, 119 grams. Glass is curved sapphire, water resistance is 100 meters from a push-pull crown, and the movement, well, they call it a BD-01. Now, I can't find any more information on the movement than that, I'm afraid. It's a three-hand, no-date skeleton movement, automatic, bi-directional winding, they quote 21 joules and a 72-hour power reserve, but it doesn't hack. Now, I popped both units that I was supplied with on the time grapher. Blue one was running rock solid at minus six seconds per day, zero beat error, very healthy amplitude. However, the black one was running at minus 20 seconds per day. Now, that sounds appalling, but it's still within the factory tolerances of a Seiko NH35, so I can't bash it too hard. Let's just say that your mileage may vary. Perhaps don't buy this one if you are looking for ultra accuracy. I do like the curved case back though with curved exhibition glass, and I've got no complaints about the standard of finishing on the movement itself for the money they're asking. 
It's all fairly neat and tidy and there were no cheesed screw heads either front or back. Case finish is also very nice considering it's titanium. I'm not sure what grade they've used, but they've managed to get a bit of polish on here as well, which you don't see often, a bit of a chamfer. It does look like titanium though, it's got that dull gray, mostly satinized finish, but a bit of bead blasting on the lugs. There's a big hexagonal crown with the Boderi logo on it. And opposite the crown, there is a display window. Um, uh, okay. I'm not quite sure what it's meant to be displaying. It doesn't really give you a clear view of anything in particular, but I guess it's a point of difference. I do like the rubber strap though, proper FKM rubber and very well fitted to the case. It can be removed using a small screwdriver, but given how comfortable it is, I'm not sure why one would bother. It's got a couple of rib sections at the top, two retainers, one with shoulders, and a really interesting piece of hardware. Now the clasp is made of stainless steel, not titanium, which is probably just as well because it's spring loaded. Now I've never seen that done before. The two wings of the butterfly, if you will, pop out when you're taking the watch off and pop back in when you're putting it on again. Another point of difference, but probably more useful than the side window. Dial and hands. Well, there isn't really much dial in there, just a lot of skeletonization, but much like the back of the watch, it is neatly done. The screws have all been installed sympathetically and there's some color matched anodizing throughout, matching the fixed bezel around the edges of the crystal also. And you actually get to see a fair amount of the movement. The mainspring obviously up there at 12 and the balance wheel and pallets all nicely symmetrical, ticking away down there at the six o'clock. There is a printed chapter ring with minute markers around the outer edges. There's also minimal color company branding, the Boderi name at the 12. There are some cantilevered arrowhead hour markers sitting just inboard of the chapter ring and pointing at the pinion. The handset though, not particularly traditional shall we say. Flat, high polished, semi-skeletonized and with literal arrows at the tips helping you with legibility. But legibility is really not what these watches are known for. Similarly, there is a red tip to the second hand, meaning you can usually see where it is. But yeah, this one is not about at a glance timekeeping. It's about a specific look overall. But there is some loom on all three hands and on the indices pointing towards the pinion. Boderi claim it to be super luminova. I mean, I wasn't expecting too much to be honest. And when I turn the speed up, that's just as well. The indices fade fast, but the hands are actually still visible for what they're worth at the end of the test. But like I said, legibility is simply not this watch's priority. It's about the look when you're wearing it. And this one definitely captures the Richard Mille ethos a little bit, I think. And it's a better fit and more comfortable fit than I was expecting it to be. Do be warned again though, if your wrist is much smaller than mine at seven inches, you may struggle with the lug to lug. The whole watch is curved though, which really helps, but that's only ever gonna do so much for you if you have a smaller wrist. You know, a big watch like this looks a little bit shocking from these high and low wrist shots, but it probably doesn't look all that big from the pocket shot. Now you can see I tried my best today with my brightest shot and t-shirt combination, but I still can't manage to overshadow the watch. It's definitely the most garish thing in the picture. All right, moans and niggles, it may be a giveaway, but it is still a review and giveaway today. I guess to aspire to the ownership of one of these watches, you have to aspire to ownership of a Richard Meal in the first place. And that clearly is not gonna be for everyone. And this style of unspecified skeletonized movement is always gonna be a bit of a leap into the unknown. Looks pretty, 24 month warranty gives you some confidence, but not the same confidence you get from having a Seiko or a Miyota, a known quantity in the back of your watch. And it may be made of titanium, but it is a big chunky watch. I've said it a couple of times already, perhaps not suitable for wrists much smaller than mine. And if you're gonna rely on a piece of metal bending consistently, well, it's gonna have a finite lifespan, isn't it? I'm glad this is made of stainless steel and not titanium though, put it that way. And what time is it anyway? Yeah, the hands almost seem like a bit of an afterthought, which is never really something you want to be saying if you're concerned about actually using your watch for, you know, telling the time. But one thing I cannot complain about is the value for money. A well-finished titanium case, curved sapphire, FKM strap, super luminova, decent level of water resistance, spring-loaded clasp, etc., etc., all for 270 if you sign up for a discount. I think that's pretty good value if you're into this style of watch, but two of you won't even be paying that. Two of you will be getting these two for free. So what do you have to do to win one of these two Boderi Storms then? Well, you probably know the deal by now if you've entered a giveaway here before. It's a subscriber giveaway, so please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. 
like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. Click the link in the description, head over to the Boderi website, scroll to the bottom of any page and sign up for their newsletter by giving them your email address. Once you've done that, come back here, leave a comment on this video, any comment you like, but I suggest keeping it clean to avoid the spam filters. I will pick one comment at random in seven days time, so next Saturday night Australia. I will pin that comment and ask the winner to contact me by email, not by telegram, not by WhatsApp, Jody at justonemorewatch.com. Once I've sorted out the first winner, I will then pick a second comment at random, pin that comment, etc, etc. Like I said, please don't get scammed. I will never ask you to WhatsApp me or Telegram me, and I will never ask you for a dollar. Good luck to all entrants, and if you're not successful this time, don't worry, plenty more giveaways on the channel soon. Thanks for making it all the way to the back end of this video. If you like this look, but not this watch, why not check out either of these two by Sega Designs? Thanks again, and I hope to see you all in a future video.